Okay, good morning, everyone. We'll call this meeting to order. I will mention that uh, Councillor Foster is unable to join us this morning due to um, family reasons, but he sends his best wishes uh, to everyone for a Merry Christmas. Um, before we, we went on camera, it's in my notes though. Um, happy birthday to our CAO, uh, George Vadimont Kaur. Hope you have a great day. And uh, also to mention that we will be pulling item 2020-132, that's dealing with the MOU for the YMCA as they will not be able to open as expected in January uh, due to the being put into the gray zone. With that, I will ask if there's any disclosure of pecuniary interest. If at some point throughout the meeting you find that you do, please declare it at that time. Adoption of minutes, if I could have a mover and seconder for the November 25th minutes. Uh, Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells resolve that the minutes of the special meeting of Council held November 12th, 2020 are hereby adopted as circulated. All those in favour? And that is carried. If I can have a mover and seconder for the November 25th regular Council minutes. Councillor Watson and Deputy Mayor Bray resolve that the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held November 25th, 2020 are hereby adopted as circulated. All those in favour? And that is carried. Special uh, meeting of Council minutes, December 10th. If I can have a mover and seconder for that, please. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells resolve that the minutes of the special meeting of Council held December 10th, 2020 are hereby adopted as circulated. All those in favour? And that is carried. Uh, deputations, presentations, petitions and public meetings, we have none. Moving on to comment and question period, a 15 minute session wherein persons in attendance at the regular meeting of Council have an opportunity to make a comment or ask a question pertaining to a staff report coordinated committee report or bylaw. Comments will be received for council consideration, but will not be discussed or debated at this time. So Madam Clerk, do we have anyone registered today to speak? Thank you, Your Worship. We do have two members of the public here for comment period. Um, first on the list is Mr. Peter Gribben from 443 Shore Lane with a comment or question on the budget. Uh, bylaw. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gribben. Morning. First of all, I'd like to wish all the council and staff a very Merry Christmas and hopefully a, a much better year in 2021 that we've had to experience in 2020. Um, my question is in respect of the beachfront RFP. Now, it's the beachfront RFP is mentioned in 8.2 as part of the budget, but it's specifically mentioned in 3.1, which was the staff report that was omitted from last month's council meeting. So my question really is specifically to that because there was no opportunity to ask the question uh, last the last council meeting because it was omitted. So if if you're okay with that, I'll proceed and ask my question. So I'm just going to look to the clerk um, to ensure that it falls within our rules. If it um, if we're talking about the minutes um, that would have been approved um, last month but were missed, they were still council minutes, if I'm understanding. So that would not be something. But uh, Dina. That's correct, Your Worship. Council minutes are not up for discussion during comment period. The time to um, discuss that would have been when that item was on the council meeting agenda for approval. Well, this is the first time it's been on the council agenda. It wasn't on the council agenda last month. It was missed. No, whether whether it was if it was in minutes, um, uh, council minutes, it would uh, still not have been permitted last month. It would have had to have been the minutes coming back from coordinated committee or committee of the whole or as a bylaw. So uh, that would have been the, the time to ask a question about that. Is there something on today's agenda that uh, fits within the rules of asking well, a question beach or comment? Fund, the beach fund is in the uh, budget in 8.2. Okay, so it, it, again, I, I go to the clerk. Is that something that can be asked at this meeting, Dina? If it's related to a budget item in the budget bylaw, that is permitted. Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Gribben, if you'd like to ask your question. Thank you, yeah, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, it's been admitted that at least one council member didn't review the protected RFP document um, for the Beachfront RFP, which was obviously kept pretty um, protected under the um, guidance of the CAO. 
And, and yet every member of council voted on this RFP. No one abstained. So my question is, um, how was this allowed to happen? Isn't this, is this an integrity issue, voting on a major project, project when you haven't even reviewed the RFP document? And why hasn't this been questioned and followed up at all? So uh, my comment to that is that there was a council member who had a family matter who did not um, get in to read the uh, RFP prior to the meeting. However, um, we have professional staff who worked with our legal team and a consultant, Deloitte, to create that document. And it's up to the council member whether they have the confidence in those people to um, support it. It is my understanding following the meeting, they did come in and, and uh, review it. And you know that that's each individual council member's um, role and and, and uh, responsibility to look at. This council member obviously was comfortable with staff and what they were recommending. Wow, uh, that that surprises me. I, I don't know how you can vote on a major project without actually knowing all the details of the RFP. Well, that's actually, there's R, there's RFPs all the time, Mr. Gribben, that go out that council members do not. Um, look at, have input into, or uh, anything like that. So, you know, that, that is your opinion. Um, I can't speak for the council member. So it, that's, oh. that's all I can answer on your question today. Okay, it's more than an opinion. I think it's quite shocking, but thank you anyway for the response. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Dina, do you wanna introduce the next speaker, please? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the next speaker is Mrs. Uh, Judy Desormo. Judy, if you would um, show your video and turn on your mic. She also okay. has a question on the budget. Okay. Can you see or hear me? Because I did turn it on. Yes. We can see you hear you. Go ahead with your question, please. Yeah, this is not my wheelhouse at all, but I too would like to uh, wish everyone at Town Hall, Council, staff, everybody a Merry Christmas, and we do hope for better next year. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I would like to speak to, I shifted gears this morning because I've had something that's really bothered me. It is related to 8.1, I believe it was on the budget. It's about the library arena and the last uh, budget meeting that the town hall had. And it was a comment made by one of the members about a reference trying to support the, the economic force of this going forward was in reference to the roaring 20s and the last pandemic we had. <clears throat> I come from an age, I'm old enough to know my parents talking about the depression. We know how the roaring 20s ended. And, and if we're using that as an analogy to support the economic benefits or impact of this going forward, I don't think that's such a good idea. We had a recent Monteith and Brown, you've got a recent report that's on, on your desk just now that still puts us where we know we're confirmed. We have a lower income, we have a higher demographic base than all of the province and the region. So knowing all of this, wouldn't it be wise? Don't worry about the numbers game. Don't say how much we can afford this. And I am talking. Could nobody hear me? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I, I just think that maybe we could go forward, keep the numbers where they are, keep the budget where it is but don't put the shovels in the ground. Let's hold off for another year. We'll have the money in place and we'll have a way better idea where this is going. I just took real offense to this being compared to the roaring 20s because the dirty 30s were not a good time. And that's, that's the only comment I have to make. Okay, well, thank you for that comment. Uh, council and staff have been uh, working towards moving forward with the arena and library. It is on track. We are continuing to move forward. That is based on um, financials and, and uh, proper information that says we're in good shape. And so uh, I, I think for, for the most of us, we are um, looking forward to, to getting started on that. Uh, Mr. CAO, it was just a, a comment um, from the speaker, so um, we won't debate or get into that, but if you have a, a quick comment to make, we'll, we'll allow that. Thank you, Your Worship. And just uh, to our speaker, um, I was the one who made the comment. It was not a member of council, and it was at the end of my comments, and it was just as an example, and I'm sorry I offended you. The main part of my comment had to do with forecasts by the Bank of Canada, the Conference Board of Canada, and major banks and developers within the community. All those, all those uh, sources have pointed to a very positive outlook 
for 2021. That was the main part of my of my message to um, to members of council. And I apologize if I offended you with respect to the comment with respect to the Roaring Twenties. Sorry. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. CAO. Dina, is there any other speakers today? Thank you, Your Worship. No, there are no more speakers. Okay, thank you. Moving on to unfinished business, we have none. Uh, under correspondence, if I can have a mover for 7.1.1. Uh, be moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Deputy Mayor Bray. The Council received the letter dated November 24th, 2020 from the City of Hamilton pertaining to a request for an interim cap on gas plant and greenhouse gas pollution and the development and implementation of a plan to phase out gas-fired electricity generation for information. Any discussion? All those in favour? And that is carried. I can have a mover and seconder for 7.1.2, please. Councillor Kinney, Councillor Belanger, the council received the letter dated November 24th, 2020 from the city of Hamilton pertaining to the temporary cap on food delivery service charges for information. Any discussion? All those in favor? And that is carried. A mover and seconder for 7.1.3. Councillor Watson and Deputy Mayor Bray. The council received the letter dated December 16th, 2020 from the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing for information. Any discussion? Councillor Watson? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this one and the next one just wanted to make a note that uh, the municipality has received funding uh, for around $270,000 for both these initiatives, which is uh, very helpful at this time. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, definitely good news. All those in favor? And that is carried. If I can have a mover for 7.1.4. Councillor Belanger and Councillor Kinney, the council received the letter dated December 15th, 2020 from the Ministry of Transportation for information. All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, mover and seconder for 7.1.5. Councillor Kinney, Deputy Mayor Bray, the council received the letter dated December 16th, 2020 from the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services for information. Any discussion? All those in favor? And that is carried. 7.1.6, a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Watson, Deputy Mayor Bray, the council received the letter dated December 16th, 2020 from the Ontario Newsroom for information. All those in favor? And that is carried. And 7.1.7 .7 regarding uh, unauthorized car rally support, if I can have a mover and seconder for this motion. Deputy Mayor Bray, Councillor Wells. The council received the letter dated December 17th, 2020 from the Municipality of South Huron for information. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Deputy Mayor Bray, you wish to speak. Thank you, Mayor Bifolci. Just uh, a comment to say that it's nice to see that there is uh, so much support from other municipalities. It's obviously a problem that was much bigger than Wasaga Beach, and hopefully the uh, input to the province will help changes come forward a little quicker than if they would if it was just us on our own. So thank you to other municipalities for joining the campaign. Great. Thank you. And Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Worship, and thank you to Deputy Mayor Bray on saying almost exactly what I was going to say. So uh, kudos on the other communities um, trying to rally support for this because I think if we can get support from the province, it'll make our roadways a lot safer. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor? And that is carried. Committee board and staff reports. Uh, committee the whole budget minutes, December 3rd. The following are the highlights from the December 3rd Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee meeting. The committee received a special COVID-19 statement for information from the Chief Medical Officer of Health for Simcoe Muskoka. As well, the committee received a letter from the health unit providing instructions to business operators and municipalities in regard to safe operating practices during the pandemic. 
Committee is recommending that Council confirm Deputy Fire Chief Craig Williams' appointment as a Compliance Officer for the Town of Wasaga Beach, responsible for implementation and compliance of COVID-19 safety plan and all other related measures. The health unit made this a requirement as part of its, as part of its instructions referred to earlier. This is a form, formality as the deputy has performed this role since the start of the pandemic. The committee received draft three of the 2021 municipal budget for information. This is essentially the version of the budget before council for, for final approval tonight. I'll speak more on the budget later in our meeting. Also at the December 3rd budget meeting, committee received the four year operating forecast, which identifies the funds required to continue the delivery of municipal services. We also received the 10 year capital forecast and the 2021 reserve forecast for information. In addition, the committee received a report from the CAO regarding the Chamber of Commerce no longer re requiring the use of 550 River Road West for its office location. The committee is recommending to council that it acknowledge the decision of the chamber to offer services to members in an alternative manner and that it agrees to terminate the lease agreement for the chamber's portion of 550 River Road West. As well, the committee is recommending to council that it accept transfer of an existing sublease with a third party tenant from the chamber subject to the tenant entering into a new month to month lease based on the town standard format and meeting any other requirements of the town. The committee also approved changes to the draft 2021 operating budget to reflect the chamber's departure from 550 River Road West. On behalf of Committee of the Whole, I ask that Council approve the recommendations in this report. Can I have a mover and seconder for these minutes, please? Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells, that Council receive the Committee of the Whole budget report of December 3rd, 2020 as circulated and approves all actions contained therein. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? And that is carried. Moving on to coordinated committee minutes, uh, we will start with community services and that is Councillor Kinney, please. Thank you, Your Worship. The following are the highlights of the December 10th, 2020 community services sections of the coordinated committee. Committee received a presentation by Steve Langwa of Menthe uh, Brown Planning Consultants on the final park and trail master plan. The draft plan had been presented to committee in October. The plan serves to guide the next decade in terms of investments the town should make to maintain and enhance the park's trails. Public, cons public consultation through Let's Talk Wasaga Beach played a part in creating this plan, as well as input from staff and members of council. Committee received a plan for this, for, mis for this information. The public can view the plan on our website at www.wasagabeach.com and on our community engagement site at www.letstalkwasagabeach.ca. Finally, committee was also received a report from the Director of Library Services and the Chair of the Age Friendly Community Advisory Committee on the committee's application for $40,000 in funding from the Ontario Government Inclusive Communities Grant Program to hire a consultant to develop an updated age friendly plan. Committee also agreed to lend its support to this application. On behalf of the Community Service Section of Coordinated Committee, I ask Council to approve the recommendations in this report. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. Are there any questions of Councillor Kinney's report? Okay, we'll move on to Public Works, and that's Councillor Watson. Thank you, Your Worship. The following are the highlights from the December 10th, 2020 Public Works section of Coordinated Committee. Committee received the Capital Works Project Status Report for information. The report noted work continued on the Main Street Bridge Rehabilitation Project. Work also continued on the Veterans Way and Klondike Park Road geometric improvements and water main installation. Crews also continued to work on the Trillium Creek flow containment berm. Planning for a number of future projects took place as well. This includes upgrades to Mosley Street between 45th Street and Beechwood Road, plus the widening of River Road West from Veterans Way to Blueberry Trail. The committee also received the Drinking Water Systems Monthly Report and the Water Pollution control plant monthly report with each showing the systems are operating to standards. As well, committee received local transit uh, statistics, ridership is down 
due to the pandemic, but transit continues to provide a valuable service to the community. On behalf of the Public Works Section of Coordinated Committee, I ask the Council receive this report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of Councillor Watson's report? Okay, moving on to Development uh, Committee in Councillor uh, Foster's absence. I'll go to Deputy Mayor Bray for that, please. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The following are the highlights of the December 10th Development Services Section of Coordinated Committee. Committee is recommending that Council pass a bylaw to remove the holding symbol on land at 2301 and 2320 Shore Lane once notice is given. Committee is also recommending Council approve the application for zoning bylaw amendment for a property at 25 Wood Avenue. Committee also received for information the building permit report for November. I'm happy to report that we issued 107 permits for construction valued at $23 million. These permits brought in just over $200,000 in fees for the municipality. In addition, the committee received the Economic Development Activity Report. The report notes work on the comprehensive wayfinding strategy continues. The strategy will identify a new approach to wayfinding, including new signage, to help improve how people travel throughout the community and they find local landmarks. Work continues on the economic development strategy as well. The strategy will identify ways of creating a robust year-round economy while creating an environment favorable to attracting and retaining businesses. The report notes staff continue to work on the town's support local marketing efforts in conjunction with the town's COVID-19 business recovery team. Staff also continue to meet individually with local businesses to build relationships and gain an understanding of the needs. On behalf of the Development Services Section of Coordinated Committee, I ask that Council approve the recommendations in this report. Thank you. Are there any questions on this report? Okay, then we will move on to General Government, also Deputy Mayor Bray. Thank you. The following are the highlights from the December 10th, 2020 General Government Section of Coordinated Committee. The committee is recommending that Council enter into an encroachment agreement with the owner of 91 Old Mosley Street to allow a privately owned shed on a portion of the 14th Street unopened road allowance. The committee is also recommending that Council award the town's insurance business to Frank Cohen Company Limited at a 2021 rate of $417,637 with a $25,000 deductible effective February 1st, 2021 for a five-year term renewable annually within the term. The town used an RFP process as per the municipality's purchasing poly policy to select the firm. Also, committee is recommending that council receive the 2019 investment report for information. The report shows the town investment portfolio, sorry, uh, is in good shape. These funds represent the funding requirements for day-to-day -day operations of the town and for future capital expenditures. The investment portfolio at year end of 2019 was 63 and a half million compared to 57 million in 2018. As well, the committee is recommending that council engage HG Appraisers Inc. to undertake real estate appraisals for the five town owned development parcels at Beach Area One for a fee of $10,750 as a single source purchasing action under the town's purchasing policy. The town is redeveloping these lands through an RFP process that is currently underway. The appraisals will determine the value of the land the town plans to sell for redevelopment. Sole source purchasing action is appropriate under the town's purchasing policy due to the company's demonstrated history and its recent appraisal work, as well as the likelihood of not being able to find a firm as well versed in our community. In addition, committee is recommending that council approve the lease renewals for 41 Beach Drive Unit C and D, 13 First Street Unit 1, and a new lease with an existing tenant at 47 Beach Drive, Unit G, based on the town standard lease agreement. Details about these transactions are in the related staff reports. Finally, committee recommends that council amend the bylaw that delegates routine or minor powers and duties to officers of the corporation to further delegate authority to the CAO to approve special recognition of staff and to approve the lifting of the hold symbol provision of the Planning Act. Special recognition of staff doesn't happen often, but as the CAO notes in his report, several staff stepped up to deal with pandemic issues this year. Removing the hold symbol on a property is a, mainly a technical matter, but often is a timely requirement. Allowing the CAO to administer this duty will mean a special council meeting is not required to pass a bylaw removing the hold. On behalf of the general government section of coordinated committee, I ask that council approve the recommendations in this report. Thank you. 
Thank you. Are there any questions on this? Councillor Belanger. Yes, I just wanted to reinforce on item 6.5.6, 6, uh, which is the appraisals of our beachfront properties. Uh, I had opposed the motion of single source and I disagree that there isn't uh, other firms uh, that have knowledge of Wasega Beach. In fact, I had uh, indicated that I had researched a firm that's a specialist in commercial waterfront. And uh, in addition, uh, the market has uh, been moving uh, very rapidly. Uh, we, uh, this is a very, very large uh, dollar volume appraisal. And I had suggested that we get a second appraisal for comparison. And part of that was related over the last few years. Uh, we've received a, a number of appraisals from different companies uh, where council uh, deemed that, uh, that they may have been uh, quite different than market values. So. Uh, I just wanted to reinforce that with the public. Thank you. Are there any other comments at this point or questions? Okay, if I can have a mover and seconder for the coordinated committee minutes. Councillor Watson, Councillor Kinney, that council received the coordinated committee reports of December 10th, 2020 as circulated and approves all actions contained therein. All in favor? And that is carried. Committee of the whole December 15th. The following are the highlights from the December 15th Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee meeting. Treasurer Jocelyn Lee presented an overview of draft four of the budget, followed by individual departmental presentations by the town's department heads. The budget proposes a 2.99% increase to municipal taxes, which works out to a total 1.70% when the county and school board tax rates are considered. In 2021, the average household assessed at $330,000 uh, property taxes will increase by $55.08 for the year or an extra $4.59 per month. Taxes plus other rates and fees the town collects supports the delivery of municipal services and capital projects. The draft operating budget sits at $42 million and the draft capital budget is $54 million. The budget continues to include significant investments in a number of areas including facilities, roads and bridges, water and wastewater infrastructure, transit, physician recruitment, the fire department, playground structures and planning studies that support community development. Included as part of the budget is funding for the new Twin Pad Arena and Library project. The treasurer provided committee and the public based on the town's financial plan a breakdown of how the arena and library project will be paid for in 2021 and beyond. Later in the meeting, the treasurer reviewed the four-year operating forecast, which identifies the funds required to continue the delivery of municipal services as she reviewed the 10-year capital forecast, which notes funds required to support various capital infrastructure projects over the next decade. The total capital expenditures from 2022 to 2031 are 225 million with an average of 22.5 million each year. This includes 10.8 million for upgrades to River Road West, and 5.5 million for upgrades to Mosley Street, west of 45th Street. In addition, the forecast includes funds to cover the cost of the new Twin Pad Arena and Library, a new pumper truck, storm drainage projects, and additional items. The treasurer also provided information on future estimated tax rates so that council and the public has a clear understanding of what to expect in the years ahead. For the benefit of the public, I will mention that information again. In 2022, we are looking at a 2.2% tax rate increase the 2023 rate will increase by 2.51%. The 2024 rate is 2.3% higher and the 2025 rate is 2.04%. Members of the public then made statements and asked questions about the draft budget. I'd like to thank our participants uh, for their interest. Committee then passed motions recommending that council adopt the 2021 operating and capital budget and receive the four year operating forecast and 10 year capital forecasts. I also want to thank our treasurer and all of our staff for the effort that has gone into the budget. We are accomplishing a great deal to help move our community forward. Finally, I encourage everyone watching at home to review the budget presentation and related material on our website. On behalf of Committee of the Whole, I ask that Council approve the recommendations in this report. Are there any discussions? Uh, Councillor Belanger? Thank you, Mayor Bifolci. Um, yes, I. I I'm not going to uh, cover all of the concerns I expressed uh, in the previous meeting. I would encourage uh, our public to to watch the committee of the whole on December 15th. Uh, 
But I did uh, oppose the budget. Uh, I opposed the development charges and the increased development charges has a lot to do with uh, the low uh, property uh, tax increases in the forecast. Uh, but I, I do wanna seek some clarification. The blended budget is 1.69%, which represents about $450,000 in increased taxation. And uh, Mayor Bifolti, you're on record as saying a zero increased budget uh, would have been financially irresponsible and that uh, we would have to play catch up at some point in the future. However, we have no concern about maybe having to play catch up on a $60 million expenditure and uh, a huge increase in operational costs on an annual basis. But I would like clarification, uh, both yourself and Mayor Bifolci, or sorry, yourself and uh, Deputy Mayor Bray sit on County Council and County Council made the decision to dip in reserves for a 0% budget. And it's been reported to me that that vote was unanimous, that everyone approved the vote. So if a 0% increase is financially irresponsible, I'm confused because uh, it's irresponsible for Wasega Beach, but it appears to be okay for the County of Simcoe. So if you could clarify, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Council. All I'll say on that is uh, at the county level, we uh, look after different services than we do at a municipal uh, level. I can tell you uh, when the county has the opportunity for the greater good of Simcoe County to um, to uh, help out their member municipalities, that's what we do. So, uh, yep, I, I supported uh, zero at the county. Deputy Mayor Bray, did you have anything to add? Hi. Uh, in particular to the, the Simcoe County, no, I, at that level, I did support a 0% increase. Uh, staff presented a report that was solid and uh, good explanation. And I think if they can help the municipalities through this, they're getting a lot more of the federal and the provincial government grants than we are. So if they can uh, use those to continue the level of service that we as residents of Simcoe County continue to receive, then I think it's awesome. They're, they too are in great financial shape. They have the reserves and they can use them. Um, if I can continue on, I have other comments to add. Is, is that, that's good enough for, for that question? <laughs> I, I think we've both answered uh, the council's question, so go ahead. Okay, so then just further to the budget, um, I do support our budget. I do support the small increase. I think uh, historically our town taxes have been very low. And as more and more people move to town, the current economic snapshot says that our population growth is 13%. So we, we are a growing town and those people, as well as our residents deserve and expect um, increased services. So we are planning uh, conservatively to give them to them I think it's a responsible budget. We are again a growing town. Uh, the financing for our arena again is very conservative. When you look at the details in that treasurer's report, uh, this is not a, a quick um, let's get it done decision. This is a really well thought out plan to finance infrastructure that this town has needed for a long time. So other highlights from our budget included recruitment for five new doctors, um, our staff and Councillor navigating very, very well, I would say, through COVID-19. Um, we're working to redevelopment the beachfront. We are the, um, the branding for Wasaga Beach. There's so many really exciting things in this budget when you dig down into the details that I think our residents are very lucky. So I am fully in support of this year's budget. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And we do have a bylaw later in the um, agenda dealing with the actual budget. So I will save my comments till then. If there's any other questions or comments um, on the minutes from December 15th. I'll look for a mover and seconder. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells, the council received the Committee of the Whole Budget Report of December 15th, 2020 as circulated and approves all actions contained therein. All those in favor? And those opposed? That is carried by a vote of five to one with Councillor Belanger in opposition. Uh, moving on to the accounts, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, did you wish to speak to this? Uh, thank you. Just to point out that the details of these accounts were reviewed at the coordinated committee level by each of the committees. Thank you. Thank you. And if I can have a mover and seconder, please. 
Councillor Kinney and Deputy Mayor Bray, the Council approved the November 1st to 30th, 2020 accounts in the amount of $5,031,947.70. All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, 8.5 is a report from the Deputy Clerk. If I could have a mover and seconder for this, please. Councillor Kinney, Councillor Watson. That Schedule C to Bylaw 2018-98 being appointments to local boards be amended by removing Doug Vitale as a member of the Committee of Adjustment and inserting John Smith. And further, that Schedule C to Bylaw 2018-98 be amended by removing Tracy Jarrett as Secretary Treasurer, Resource Person, and inserting Doug Heron or his designate. And further, that Schedule C to Bylaw 2018-98 be amended by removing Dagmar DeRyke as recording secretary, resource person, and inserting Janet Farr. And further, that Schedule B to bylaw 2018 98 be amended by removing Ellen Timms as the staff resource for the Advisory Committee of Tourism and inserting Caitlin Monsma. Is there any clarity required on any of these? All those in favor? And that is carried. If I can have a mover and seconder for item 8.6, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, Councillor Kinney, the Council execute a three-year agreement with ACCEO Solutions, Inc. for the license, supply, and maintenance of the town's parking enforcement administration software. Is there any discussions or questions on this? All those in favor? And that is carried. 8.7, dealing with uh, portable signs. If I could have a mover and second for that, please. Councillor Watson. Councillor Belanger, the Council approved variances to bylaws 1996-10 and 1996-13 to allow the usage of portable signs between January 1st to April 1st, 2021, as recommended in the report. And Councillor Kinney, you wish to speak to this? Thank you, Your Worship. I had talked to um, our lead in bylaw prior to this, and I seem to remember that we had done this back when the town needed it back uh, in the summer area. And what we had done at that time is do a $25 initial fee for using the signs and then further confirmation each month free of charge for the next number, seeing that we're going to try this from January to April. I um, posed the thought process that we would follow that line and only charge instead of $25 per month, just $25 for the initial sign and then the request from the sign participants to confirm each month their use with our bylaw. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Reagan, did you wish to speak to that? Yeah, through your worship. Thank you very much for that. And thank you, Councillor Kinney. Uh, that is what's being proposed as well. So yeah, going forward with the same uh, renewal model as last time we had this variance and uh, just the initial fee is what we're proposing for this one as well. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor? And that is carried. 8.8. Uh, uh, if I could have a mover and seconder, please. Deputy Mayor Bray and Councillor Kinney. The Council received the Pasaga Beach Socioeconomic Profile Report as information. Was there any discussion on this item? Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Mayor uh, Bifolti. This was a very detailed report and uh, I, I've taken an awful lot of notes, but the, the, the one thing that I found uh, quite interesting is in this report, uh, unlike the census, uh, in the last census, it was indicated that the average family income in Wasega Beach is 18% below the province. Uh, obviously, I, I don't know if any of the COVID impacted uh, this more recent survey, uh, but the gap has now, according to uh, this report, has increased to 24% less than the provincial average. So I, I think it does speak to some of the hardships that our residents are experiencing uh, within Wasega Beach. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Bray. 
Thank you. Um, and it's interesting when, when we read a report, I think we all tend to pull out things that, that speak to us. I thought it was an excellent report. It really is a great snapshot of our community. I think it's good to see a deliverable from um, the economic development strategy come forward so quickly. It's obviously information they needed for them to be able to prepare their report. And I think to share it with us is, is awesome. Um, a little earlier, I pulled out the statistic about the population growth, which was 13%. Um, we all know we're growing, but I think it's nice to see the numbers. The um, other thing that I thought worth highlighting was that the increased uh, earnings have gone up 16%. So our households are younger, um, a little more affluent than they were in the past, and we are a growing community. So I think they're all really good things to pull from this report. So thank you for sharing as quickly as you did. It's a, it'll be good Christmas reading for anyone who wants to take a little bit of time. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you, anyone else? Okay, I've read the motion. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you, thank you, Tyler. Uh, item 8.9, if I could have a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Kinney, Deputy Mayor Bray, the council receives the report of the senior planner regarding Province of Ontario Bill 229 for information purposes only. Is there any discussion on this? All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, 8.10, if I could have a mover and seconder for that, it's a CAO's report regarding uh, fill screening at 544 River Road West. Deputy Mayor Bray, Councillor Kinney, the Council approved Darren Neal and Sons excavating for the project to screen 12,500 square meters of fill for $36,012.50 as per details in the attached RFQ document as part of the new arena and new library capital budget codes 02765-6300 and 6300 and 02730-6300-63000 respectively. Is there any discussion on this item? Councillor Belanger? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Bifolci. Uh Just uh, to the CAO, uh, if he can recollect, I can't uh, remember, but uh, had had we done a uh, an environmental phase one study on 544 River Road West? Mr. CAO? Thank you, Worship. Through to you, to the Councillor. Um, a phase one environmental study was done by the previous owner and we obtained a copy of that when we purchased the property. Okay, so, uh, and is that, uh, would that be public information or does that have to go through Freedom of Information to get a copy of that? Uh, I believe, uh, well, I'll, I'll defer to the, the clerk, but certainly from our standpoint, we have treated it as public information. Thank you, and uh, I, I just uh, saw some concerns uh, related to uh, uh, some of the fill that has been added to the property since that phase one's been done. And uh, there was some concern as to whether that uh, fill may have had contaminants. But uh, again, I'm, I'm, you may be aware of uh, that situation. I don't know. Thank you. So I can assure you there, there's uh, nothing environmental to worry about about any of soil that has been taken to that site. But Mr. CAO, can you please speak to that? Thank you, Worship. Yes. Yeah, so the town did have a phase two environmental assessment done on the property after we took ownership. And we've had the uh, town stockpiles of material tested as well from an environmental perspective. And the test results came back. All the, the material is clean material and suitable for our purposes to use as fill on the site. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, thank you, the CAO uh, made the points that I had hoped that he would to answer any questions that might be out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing further, all those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you. Next, we have the CAO's uh, verbal report regarding COVID. So Mr. CAO, I'm assuming Mr. Jennings and our deputy chief are also with us, but I will let you uh, choose the, the order people speak. Thank you, Worship. Yes, um, Mr. Jennings 
and our Deputy Fire Chief are both uh, participating this morning. So I'll let uh, Mr. Jennings go first, followed by Mr. Williams. Okay, Mr. Jennings. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Very good. I just wanted to take a moment and wish uh, all members of Council a uh, very Merry Christmas and uh, a very Happy New Year. I have uh, a few points that I wanted to cover from the provincial perspective. I'm going to start back on uh, December the 16th. Uh, this is when the province said that it is providing an additional 695 million in financial relief uh, for municipalities to ensure they do not carry operating deficits into 2021. As part of this announcement, the Minister of Municipal Affairs noted, and I quote, by ensuring our municipal partners are in a sound financial position to begin the new year, they can focus on keeping their capital projects on track while continuing to provide critical services their residents rely on. And through this announcement, Wasaga Beach uh, is receiving an additional uh, $162,000. Also on December 16th, uh, the province announced it is launching a new support local marketing campaign. Uh, this builds on efforts that municipalities have pursued since the start of the pandemic, uh, including here in Wasaga Beach. And I know members of council and the public are certainly familiar with our support local messaging that's been on social media, in our e-newsletters, in the uh, Wasaga Sun, and through various posters and signs uh, around the community. On December 18th, uh, the province said that it was distributing additional doses of Pfizer vaccine to 17 more hospital sites uh, over the next two weeks, including regions with the highest rates of COVID-19 infection. This is part of the initial phase of the government's three-phase implementation plan that began December 14th. Ontario is expecting to receive up to 90,000 Pfizer doses from the federal government before the end of the year to continue vaccinating healthcare workers and essential caregivers who work in hospitals, long-term care homes, and other retirement facilities. Uh, on December 21st, the province, this is yesterday, said it is imposing a province-wide shutdown starting Boxing Day, uh, December the 26th, at 12.01 a.m. Uh, this information was widely circulated by the province yesterday, as well as by the municipality through our social media channels. Uh, the province said the shutdown, the lockdown is being done to further protect Ontarians and fight the virus. The impacts of these measures will be evaluated over 14 days in Northern Ontario and 28 days in Southern Ontario to determine if it is safe to lift the restrictions uh, or if they need to be extended. There are also impacts for schools. Remote learning will kick in starting January 4. Uh, In-person learning will be allowed to resume at schools in northern regions starting January the 11th. For schools in all other public health regions, elementary school students are planned to be able to return to in-person learning January 11th and secondary students will continue with remote learning until January the 25th. And I just want to uh, remind the public that we update our COVID-19 information page uh, on a regular basis with uh, information from the province and uh, people can always turn there if uh, they're looking for a recent uh, announcement. And your worship, that concludes uh, my report today. Okay, thank you, Mike. And I think um, the message from the province is that they want to see municipalities continue to invest and uh, in, in infrastructure and facilities and, and keep going. Uh, Mr. CIO, we've had a discussion about that. Did you want to add to that? Thank you, Worship. I think uh, you're absolutely right. I think the correspondence from Minister Clark, as well as the, um, the media release that Council uh, received earlier in the meeting, the messages that are in those uh, two pieces of, of correspondence are very clear. Um, the province is, is providing municipalities funding so that it, they can deal with the impacts of COVID, but also give them the confidence they need to proceed with capital projects that will drive economic growth. And that's a quote right out of the uh, media release. So the province is seeing 
the benefit of continued capital investment, and they view this as being something that will help drive the economic recovery um, in 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of uh, Mr. Jennings' report? Okay, thank you. And we will move to uh, Deputy Chief Craig, please. Good morning, Your Worship, members of council. Uh, we seem to be having an internet out outage at the uh, fire hall, so I've just switched over to my cell phone, so if there's any glitches, please let me know. Uh, the following is an update from the Simcoe Muskoka District Health Unit. Globally, there have been just over 77.4 million cases of COVID-19, including 1.7 million deaths. Nationally, we've experienced 515,000 cases and 420,000 reco recoveries. Canada has also had 14,332 uh, deaths. Provincially, there have been 162,000 cases, including 134,800 recoveries, and we've now surpassed 4,100 deaths. The current number of Ontario residents hospitalized due to COVID-19 is 915, and there have been 265 admitted to ICUs, including 152 on ventilators. There are also 160 active outbreaks in long-term care homes. To date, there have been 2,508 resident deaths and eight staff deaths in these homes. Ontario has now conducted 7.4 million COVID-19 tests since the beginning of the pandemic. And yesterday alone, uh, we completed 54,500 of these tests. Within Simcoe Muskoka region, the health unit moved their internal monitoring dashboard uh, on December the 8th into the red zone, which is their highest category. We've now had 3,075 reported cases in the Simcoe Muskoka region, including 59 deaths. And based on projections, if the current level of growth continues, there will be approximately 445 cases reported during the week of January 10th to the 16th, or about 65 cases per day, with projected weekly incidence of 80 cases per 100,000 population. Approximately half of all the new infections in, December's, in December were acquired through close contact with confirmed cases, and about 20% were acquired uh, through the community. There are 17 individuals in Simcoe Muskoka that are currently hospitalized. The seven-day moving average within our region is now 42.9 cases, and our percent positivity rate is 1.8%. There are 24 active outbreaks in Simcoe Muskoka, including seven schools, four retirement homes, one hospital, four long-term care homes, four congregate settings, one correctional facility, and three workplaces. And then finally, in Wasega Beach, we've had a total of 48 cases reported by the health unit. This number now includes 38 individuals recovered, one death, uh, one hospitalized, and nine that are recovering at home. The most recent case was listed yesterday, and the uh, community transmission as well as close contact continues to be the highest mode of transmission within our town. At this point, I will briefly pause, uh, take any questions you have. I'll turn it over to our CAO, and then I will return to give a little bit of more uh, information on the province-wide shutdown and the impacts it has on our facilities and programs. Okay, thank you, Craig. Um, and I actually would like to give our community a bit of a shout out as I was watching the news last night. Uh, you know, it did show that we had uh, one case, but uh, we were the lowest. And I know it's frustrating for people right now, um, other people coming to the area and things like that. But I feel that the residents of Wasaga Beach are still doing a really good job of um, following the rules and uh, doing what they can and doing their part. So I know we're all frustrated, but um, kudos to to our community. Uh, I will open it up to uh, questions for Craig at this point. And there are none, Mr. CAO. Thank you, Worship, uh, members of council. So with uh, Simcoe uh, Muskoka moving into the red zone, the command team started to prepare uh, for moving into the gray zone so uh, or lockdown. So uh, when we met last week, the wheels were set in motion to um, to work with our various departments if such a call was made by the province and the health unit that uh, we were prepared. Um, and so a lot of work has been done already. We're meeting again right after the council meeting this morning to discuss the province's decision with respect to uh, implementing a shutdown. I can say to members of council that uh, I feel confident that we're prepared 
uh, under the leadership of our compliance officer, our deputy fire chief. I think we've got um, everything in place to uh, seamlessly move into into the shutdown mode. But I'm going to ask our deputy chief to uh, go through the through the details for members of, uh, of council and the public. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Mr. CAO. Uh, so as previously mentioned, uh, yesterday the province uh, announced that on December 26th, that provincial-wide shutdown will occur. And this is due to increasing transmission of COVID-19 uh, across the province. Uh, so the shutdown, as it relates to Southern Ontario, which is covered uh, by our region, will remain in place until January the 23rd. After January the 23rd, the province will be de determine if the restriction restrictions can be lifted uh, and if we can return to our red framework. So our command team has reviewed the shutdown framework and is prepared to implement the following changes uh, following the town's COVID-19 safety plan as well as our internal framework for all municipal facilities and programs and uh, this would be effective December the 26th. All town facilities will be closed to the public. However, our staff will remain on site and continue to uh, serve the public. The max number of indoor organized gatherings uh, is uh, not permitted. We don't have groupings of people inside. However, there are very limited exceptions to this. The max number of individuals who can participate in an organized outdoor gathering is 10. Our employees will continue to wear face coverings in all areas of the building unless they are seated at their desk or workplace. All non-essential in-person training and meetings have been cancelled. The break rooms will continue to be closed with the exception of food preparation. Meeting rooms are closed. All indoor recreation and arena programs are now suspended. Some outdoor and online recreation programs, including the outdoor ice rink, will continue. However, they will be strictly following all current public health guidelines, which include uh, the limits for outdoor gatherings of individuals. Our library will have a modified approach at this point. It will have online programming available, as well as curbside pickup and limited in-person technology access. And finally, uh, we will continue to be able to offer civil marriage services. However, um, all these uh, situations will uh, be limited based on gathering uh, numbers. And that concludes my update. Thank you. Are there any questions of uh, the deputy on that? Okay, Mr. CAO. Thank you, Worship, members of council. So as I said, the command team is meeting right after this, uh, this council meeting and we will be preparing uh, information to go out on our website to inform the public and at our various locations uh, about what the constraints that will be in place uh, upon our return on January 4th. So we'll try our best to communicate uh, with the public in Wasaga Beach so that they know what services are available and what facilities um, they may access. So uh, our communication uh, officer will be managing that rollout. Um, as indicated, we'll be uh, shut down as of uh, noon on the 24th and reopen Monday, um, January 4th. If anything should change in that period of time, certainly I'll be contacted and I'll be working with our deputy chief and make sure that members of council are informed if there's any changes that uh, um, members of council should be aware of. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If I could have a mover and seconder for this uh, verbal update. Moved by Councillor Belanger, seconded by Councillor Kinney, that Council received the December 22nd, 2020 verbal COVID-19 update from the CAO for information. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, community announcements. We will start with Deputy Mayor Bray. Thank you. It's kind of a tough one to follow. Um, as we prepare for Christmas. I think it's going to be a very Chris, uh, different Christmas for, for many of us this year. I know our family is, is planning our first Zoom gathering this evening. Uh, so uh, it will be very different, but um, we will try to figure out new ways to create new temporary traditions while we wait for the world to get back to normal next year. Uh, just a reminder that um, not everybody has family to to get together with this year and if we could kind of reach out and check on our neighbors and uh, just make sure that everybody is doing okay I think that's really important um, 
the the caution and the 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 care that we take now will make for a much better future. So stay safe, be kind, um, hugs and best wishes. Merry Christmas to to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Mayor Bifolti. Uh, first, I want to wish a very Merry Christmas, uh, joyous and safe Christmas to all of council, all of staff. It's, uh, I'm sure it's a year that we're all going to be happy to uh, put behind us and uh, no one's mentioned yet, but we do have a vaccine on the way. So uh, hopefully uh, uh, at some point in 2021, we'll see a return to some level of normality. Um, Sylvia's uh, uh, raised comments about uh, watching out for our neighbors are uh, very appropriate. And uh, certainly there's a, a couple of things that I'd like to mention as the uh, I always enjoy the Salvation Army kettles every year, but after two shifts because of the going into red and now with uh, going into shutdown, uh, the volunteers will not be out. But this is the first year that they have credit card tap and there are uh, tap machines at the LCBO, at Superstore and at Walmart. And you can take any credit card uh, that has a chip and just uh, tap the machine, it will beep and light up. Uh, that means you donated $5. You can do up to 10 taps. We certainly encourage that uh, because the need is great. Uh, also, uh, uh, our impact with Sega Beach Club uh, started uh, the Shine Your Light, Let's Make Everybody's Christmas Bright fundraiser this year because we weren't able to do the charity Christmas dinner. And I'm very happy to report uh, that after two weeks, uh, we are very close to our target of $15,000. Uh, we delivered uh, a gross amount of 3,000 toys to the Kinets toy drive. Uh, we will be making a donation to In Out of the Cold, uh, provided uh, a number of items for the Wasega Ministerial Food Bank hampers, and they will also get a uh, significant uh, cash donation and uh, that's it for me thank you very much thank you councillor wells thank you worship uh, i have no sort of municipal report to make at this time uh, but i do want to as others have already done wish uh, all of our residents all of our business people uh, the very best of the holidays uh, merry christmas to all who celebrate christmas and uh, merry or happy holiday to those of our community who celebrate alternative or other uh, other holiday periods. Um, hope everyone has a, a great uh, holiday period, a uh, great Christmas, and as others have said, look forward to a uh, less stressful uh, 2021. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I too would like to wish a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2021 to Council, uh, to all staff and to the public. Um, as far as community uh, involvement, we, well, I was out busy um, going from store to store trying to, to chat with people. Uh, also, uh, myself and Councilor Belanger was at a memorial for the tragic loss of, uh, of a Sega Beach uh, person during the month and a loss during this time is never easy to to um, uh, to to find well actually find words for right now um, but besides that your worship again I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you Councillor Watson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, during the last uh, month, I've attended two uh, conservation authority meetings of the Board of Directors and continue to work with several residents in trying to obtain permits to protect their properties from the high water along the beachfront and the river. I attended the Wasaga Beach Builders Association Executive Board meeting and the AGM, and also the builders had a small uh, Christmas dinner attended the Lions Club cookie bake sale last Saturday as a fundraiser 
and they had a great selection of uh, festive uh, baking provided for, for our residents. I send a big thank you to our special events department for organizing the drive-by Santa event at the RecPlex over a three-day period. It was uh, wonderful to see the happy faces of the children and the dropping off of their letters to Santa. It was very well attended. I saw lots of cars lined up uh, going to see Santa over those three days and the town received some great thank yous from our residents. Uh, also a thank you to our parks and public works staff for the bright and colorful decorations in our parks and on our public buildings throughout the town. It was very impressive driving around and a big shout out to our many residents and neighborhoods that put on beautiful Christmas displays at their homes. The Christmas light trail map, which was put out by the town was very helpful in discovering these displays uh, throughout the municipality. It was, it was quite heartwarming to, to see every, every, every end of town uh, very well lit up. I thank the uh, generosity of our Wasaga Beach community in donating so freely to the Wasaga Beach Food Bank with cash, food, clothing, hand knit hats, mitts and scarves and the hardworking volunteers of the food bank. Uh, the businesses, organizations, schools, groups and individuals that contributed show the wonderful giving spirit of our residents. More than ever, the need was very great this year and many people very quietly and without fanfare met that need over and over again. At this time, I send my best wishes and hopes for everyone to enjoy the holiday season uh, before us and my best wishes for the new year. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Uh, my report, uh, I attended the, the regular meetings that we've been uh, having for the uh, COVID situation, the uh, command team. Uh, board meetings for our local utility as well as uh, arena and library meetings keeping things moving forward on that and I would just like to take this opportunity to thank my fellow council members as well as staff it uh, has been a rough year but um, there's been a lot of teamwork and uh, I'm I am really proud to be part of this team so thank you to each uh, and every one of you and uh, and to our community as I said earlier they've really stepped up and um, done their part when it comes to COVID and um, you know, again, it's, um, I, I'm a proud mayor of our community. So uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. And I hope uh, 2021 has to, has to be better. So um, fingers crossed. Uh, and with that, we will move to uh, notices of motion. I'm not aware of any. Uh, notices where most, uh, motions where notice has been previously given. I am not aware of any. Calling of committee meetings, Mr. CAO. Thank you, Worship, and members of Council. So I'm just going to refer to the January 2021 calendar. Our first uh, formal meeting is our coordinated committee on Thursday, January 14th uh, at 9 a.m., and that'll be a Zoom meeting. Uh, the following Thursday, January 21st, uh, Committee of the Whole, again at 9 a.m., and that'll be a Zoom meeting. And then our Council meeting for the month of January is Tuesday, January 26th, and it is a 2 p.m. meeting, and again, it'll be a Zoom meeting. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to bylaws, if I could have a mover and seconder, please. Okay, well, moved by, Cal I see you, Councillor Belanger, moved by Councillor Kinney. Can I have a seconder for the bylaws? Uh, Councillor Watson, uh, Councillor Belanger, you wish to speak to this? Yes, uh, if possible, could we just break out the final budget by law and vote on it separately? Okay, it actually is on its own, Councillor. So it's moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Watson, resolved that the following bylaws be received and be deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time passed and numbered as follows. 2020-123, a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement with Entro Communications Inc. to develop the Town of Wasaga Beach Comprehensive Wayfinding Strategy. 2021-24, a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement with McSweeney and Associates Consulting Inc. to develop the Town of Wasaga Beach Economic Development Strategy. 2021-25, a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement between the Town of Wasaga Beach and ACCEO Solutions Inc. for the license, supply and maintenance of parking administration software. 2021-26, a bylaw to establish fees and charges to be collected by the Corporation of the Town of Wasaga Beach. 2021-27, a bylaw to amend Town of Wasaga Beach Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw 2360 as amended, Robinson 2301 Shore Lane. 
2021-28, a bylaw to amend Town of Wasaga Beach Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Number 2360 as amended, 25 Wood Avenue, Jose Severiano. 2020-129, a bylaw to amend Town of Wasaga Beach Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Number 2360 as amended, Grace Bray, 2320 Shore Lane. 2021-30, a bylaw to authorize the entering into of an agreement between the Town of Wasaga Beach and RSM Canada Consulting LP, RSM Canada for an information security assessment. 2021-31, a bylaw to authorize an encroachment agreement between the Town of Wasaga Beach and 2252579 Ontario Inc. for the property of Lot 26, Concession 9, municipally known as 304 Main Street, and to repeal bylaw 2035. And 2021-33, a bylaw to authorize an encroachment agreement between the Town of Wasaga Beach and Christine and Marco Casimiri for the property of Plan 713, Lot 104 West, Part Lot 105, municipally known as 91 Old Mosley Street. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? And that is carried. Uh, next, we will be moving to the bylaw with regard to um, the budget. If I could uh, have a mover and seconder, and then I will open it up for comments. Moved by Councillor Kinney, seconded by Councillor Wells. Bylaw 2020-134, a bylaw to adopt the estimates of all sums required for all municipal purposes during the year 2021. Resolved that a bylaw to adopt the estimates of all sums required for all municipal purposes during the year 2021 be received and be deemed to be read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered 2020-134. Um, I do have a few comments to make on it, and uh, I'd like to start by thanking the Chief Administrative Officer, George Vatabancour, for his leadership at the staff level throughout the budget process. I must also recognize our Treasurer, Jocelyn Lee, for the significant effort she has put into this exercise. As well, I extend a sincere thank you to our other staff members who played a key role in preparing this budget. And finally, I thank my council colleagues for their involvement. The 2021 budget sets an ambitious and progressive course that will result in improved services, programs, and amenities for our community. Council strive to find the balance between addressing the impacts of COVID-19 on taxpayers while continuing to plan for our bright future. This budget contains several meaningful investments that allow us to build a more complete community and ultimately move Wasaga Beach forward. So what are the numbers for next year? The budget contains a 2.99% increase to municipal taxes, which works out to a total 1.70% increase when the county and school board rates are considered. In 2021, for the average house assessed at $330,000, property taxes will increase by $55.31 for the year or an average or for an extra $4.60 per month. For a home assessed at 450,000, the increase will be $6.29 per month. Taxes plus other rates and fees the town collects support the delivery of important municipal services and capital projects that touch the everyday lives of local residents. Our operating budget sits at 42 million and our capital budget is 54 million. This will help fund investments in the following areas. Our new Twin Pad Arena and Library project, road and bridge, bridge improvements, water and wastewater infrastructure, drainage improvements, public transit, physician recruitment, trail and park enhancements, planning studies that support community development. A key part of the project is funding for the Twin Pad Arena and Library project. I am excited to say that construction on this project will start in 2021 after several years of planning. The investments made in this budget address issues that have been brought forward by members of our community and move the town forward. They also lay the foundation for future success. Our core values as an organization are leadership, responsiveness, integrity, and optimism as we live them every day. The pandemic will not last forever. The ability of COVID-19 vaccines give rise to optimism that the economy will recover and Wasaga Beach will continue to thrive. Now there are some of those community that take a negative view of the future. They do not want this council to plan for the future to take steps now that will make the community stronger when the pandemic is over. Frankly, it's my opinion that uh, so, some would like to see this council fail, but our job is to lead. That is why we sit at the council table. We are the elected leaders of our community and work hard to improve the town each and every day. We are so fortunate to live in Wasaga Beach. It is such a naturally beautiful place and it remains one of the most affordable places to live in Simcoe County. 
We offer people a safe and quality lifestyle. This budget provides a sense of optimism that the future will be better. In all that we have done and continue to do, we are moving Wasaga Beach forward. We are investing in programs, services, and infrastructure to make our community the best it can be for today, tomorrow, and for the years ahead. So again, thank you to uh, staff and council for uh, your involvement, as well as those in the, from the public who uh, asked questions along the way. Um, so with that, I will open it up for any other comments or questions at this point. Councillor Blanger. Thank you, Mayor Bifolci. I was uh, not going to make any comment. I was just going to uh, uh, oppose the motion. But uh, I do, after your comments, want to say that uh, I am a very optimistic individual. I have uh, great faith uh, in what Wasega Beach will become in the future. Uh, but I, I do have concern. I feel there was a real opportunity uh, to uh, strengthen our application and to get appropriate levels of provincial and federal funding uh, for our library, Double Pad Arena. Uh, again, I've said in the past that I believe a project of this size for a community, our size is unprecedented. And uh, for that reason, I am opposing, but uh, I want the public to know that uh, I am very optimistic uh, related to our community and work very hard to maximize the potential with the rest of council. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor, and, and I will point out because I think we've discussed this many, many times that there uh, were factors involved with why perhaps we didn't get uh, uh, any funding for the arena and library, regardless of where it would have been located in the community. We are in great financial shape and sometimes that hurts us when we go for grants. Uh, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Worship. I just wanted to thank staff for their efforts and, and each year how they um, continue to find ways to save our taxpayers money and make a responsible and respectful budget for 2021. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Firstly, I'd like to thank our CAO, treasurer, clerk, all department heads and all their staff who participated in the preparation of the 2021 budget. It was truly a team effort to mesh all the moving parts that go into an important document such as this and come up with such a good result. This document maintains our service levels, addresses our capital and operational requirements and plans for the infrastructure needs of our growing community for the years ahead. I've had the uh, distinct privilege of serving as a councillor for the town of Wasaga Beach for four terms and worked with three of our five mayors. During my time on council and living in the community for 52 years, I have seen amazing growth in Wasaga Beach. Over the decades, various councils of the day made decisions to construct public buildings and provide sewer and water infrastructure to our residents. Whenever these public expenditures were brought forward, there was always a group of ratepayers opposed to the projects for much of the same reasons we are hearing today about our new arena and library. We don't need it. It is too expensive. Our taxes will go up. Wait until a better time. Let's try to eliminate the let's do it later sentiments. I'll do it later. I'll think about it later. I'll build it later. What we don't understand is that later means priorities change, promises get forgotten, and it often means we are then too late. We can miss the best experience and the best decisions. In 1974, Wasaga Beach became a town and one of the first priorities of the province and the town was to build a sewer and water plant and get the residents on municipal services. A ratepayer group at that time tried to stop this from happening, but thankfully were not successful. Can you imagine everyone being on a well and septic today if council had a bend bent to uh, those requests? The population of Wasaga Beach in 1974 was approximately 4,000 people. By 2002, when we received one of our last installments from the federal government, Wasaga Beach had an investment of well over $100 million in sewer and water lines, a huge expenditure for 4,000 residents. In 78, Wasaga built a new public works building, the one you see today on Westbury Road. In today's dollars, it costs approximately 1.4 million, and our population was about 5,000 people. There was lots of opposition to the construction of this building, but it has served us well over the decades. In 2003, with the doors opening to the public in 2006, Wasaga embarked on building the YMCA Recplex with a cost in today's dollars of approximately $6 million. 
our population was about 12,500. Again, there was lots of naysayers. However, council made a great decision as evidenced by the thousands who use it every year. In 2012, our new fire hall number one was open with a cost of approximately 3.8 million in today's dollars. Our population was about 17.5. <clears throat> Again, we took a lot of criticism, but made the correct decision to provide an enhanced level of fire service to our growing community. Council was elected to do a job and be responsive and listen to the needs of the community to provide leadership and carry out the services that the majority voted for and that council prioritized without hesitation or reservation. Successive councils have planned for and saved for the construction of a new library and arena. Public infrastructure projects like these are significant building blocks which become catalysts for attracting additional growth and construction. They attract families, they enhance our tourism sector, and they boost our businesses by supplying a solid foundation to the community for many generations to come. I will leave everyone with a couple of thoughts spoken by others. A community that plants trees, knowing that others for many years to come will enjoy their shade are public benefactors. If you really want to do something, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. Some councils are community builders and some are not. This council decided to quit talking and begin doing, and I thank my council colleagues for their commitment to the community, their forward thinking, and their confidence in moving our municipality forward in a fiscally responsible way. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Thank you, I just wanted to, uh, to thank Councillor Watson for taking the time to actually uh, go down the, the path of history and remind not only us on council but, but our residents that it does take um, you know sometimes tough decisions to to help the community grow and uh, I think it's really nice to actually hear about the, the big decisions we all talk about this absolutely fabulous uh, water and um, sewage treatment plant that we have in Wasaga Beach and that it has capacity because we've seen our neighboring communities growth limited by not having that so thank you for sharing history with those of us that weren't there when those decisions were made and again Merry Christmas to all thank you uh, anyone else mr. CAO did you have anything before I call uh, the vote on this thank you worship um, thank you to council and I also want to thank our treasurer and our senior budget analyst Cindy for all their hard work in, in preparing the budget. Um, the document um, that's before you um, today will be posted on the town's website. All the background documents are on the town's website. All the forecasts, the reserve fund balances, all the information that council considered in the preparation of this budget or will be on the town's website. So anybody interested in, in learning about the process the state of the town's finances, the projections for future tax rate increases, all the facts are on the town's uh, website and I encourage anyone to, uh, if they're interested to go to the town's website and you'll see that information there. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. And I have already read the motion. So all those in favor and those opposed, so that is, a carry, that is carried by a vote of five to one with Councillor Belanger in opposition. Uh, closed session is next, but I don't believe we have reason to go in. So if everyone is okay with that, we'll just uh, move on to the motions. Okay. Um, because we didn't go in camera, item 15.1, uh, the wording will change slightly um, to read that council confirms schedule D to bylaw 2021-22 provided in closed session packages pertaining to the lease matters. If I could have a mover and seconder for that. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Wells, all those in favor? And that is carried. If I could have a mover and seconder for the closed session minutes. Councillor Kinney and Councillor Watson, resolve that council receive the following closed session reports as circulated and approves all actions contained therein. Regular meeting of council, November 25th, 2020, closed session minutes. Coordinated Committee, December 10th, 2020, closed session minutes. All those in favor? And that is carried. And if I could have a mover and seconder, please, for 16.1. Councillor Kinney, Deputy Mayor Bray, 
resolved that a bylaw to authorize the execution of lease agreements be received and be deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time passed in number 2021-22. All those in favor? And that is carried. And our last motion of the year, 16.2. If I could have a mover and seconder, please. Councillor Belanger and Councillor Kinney resolved that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Town of Wasaga Beach at its regular meeting held Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020, be received and be deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time passed in number 2021-35. All those in favor. And that is carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Oh, I see our CAO's hand. Are you waving or? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Sir, Your Worship, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was gonna, I just wanted to say a couple of words before uh, we turned off our cameras. So I just wanted to wish uh, yourself, uh, Mayor Mike Fulci, members of council on behalf of the senior staff and all our staff, a very Merry Christmas and uh, a very prosperous 2021. Um, we, uh, we look forward to 2021. There's lots of exciting things happening in the municipality and we look forward to working with you on seeing those projects come to fruition. So Merry Christmas and all the best. Thank you, George. Okay, with that, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>